So to draw a wall in the toolbox under the design section we click on the wall icon. If I select the wall in the info box all the default settings for the wall are about to create propagate. But rather than go through all the parameters through this toolbox I'm just scrolling along with my mouse wheel there. Of course I can grab this handle and also move it along but for the sake of clarity I'm going to open the box the actual palette by double clicking on that icon there. So we're just going to work through this palette. First of all we have favorites and if we left mouse click on the favorites we have a list of all the walls that we may have saved earlier as favorites. It's exactly the same as we went over in the slab section but essentially if you save or create created a wall that you would use time and time again save as a favorite then you have instant access to that exact wall in one click of a button. So I'm just going to cancel out of there. Under geometry and positioning we have the height of the wall as we can see in the diagram here. It's taken from the bottom of the wall to the top of the wall unlike the slab which is from the top of the slab down we measure. So this wall here is 0 to 3 meters so this wall is actually 3 meters high and to story 0 as we can see here we are on story zero, which means our story zero will be zero as well. And of course, project zero is the same. So once again, that's going to be zero. Then we come to show on link to stories drop down. We've got two options there. The automatic, which is actually the default setting, is probably what we should leave it on because the elements will be shown on all stories that they physically intersect with. So when available, this is what we should leave it on most of the time. When it's on current or own story, we will only show the element on the story that you've actually placed the object. So it's a bit more flexible to leave it on automatic. Now as we move over to the right hand side, to this part of the palette, we can see that we've got the construction method up here. And that is where the reference line of the wall is at the moment. The best way to show this is to give you a little example. So I've got the wall reference side on one side through the middle and then the other side and we also have an offset. So if I just go OK, if I left mouse click and start drawing a wall, we can see that the majority of the wall is placed to the north of this slab, which is basically on the wrong side. If I started drawing a wall from the center, We can see the effect that that's having. Now if I wanted to have the brick part of the wall on the other side of the wall, we just simply draw it back the other way. Now if I wanted to draw with the reference side on the correct side, which is over the slab, as I start the drawing, even midway through, I can just click on the icon and swap it around. So that's exactly how it should be. Now if I look at that in 3D, we can see how the walls are sitting there and the plaster's on the inside, which is how we would like it. But on the bits that aren't correct, we can simply select them by clicking on the arrow tool and just click on switch the reference line. And of course, that will update correctly on the floor plan. This guide here was through the middle. So if I actually want to see the reference lines on the plan, I can go to view, on screen options, and show walls and beams reference lines. If I left mouse click on that, you can see the reference lines. Alternatively, I can go up to your tool palettes are. This is the same on Windows as well. If I right mouse click on that, on any of the icons. This little drop down comes down and what I basically want to see is on screen view options. As I click that another tool palette appears and we can turn the reference lines on and off through this little palette. Now I can grab that I might want to change that to the same way all the other walls are and turn off the reference lines. I can also offset the reference lines by might just select that piece of wall again 
because that's all I want to edit. Double click on the wall tool and I might offset that by 100 millimeters and we can see it has moved that wall that's pretty close to the center. I might just move that back a little, change that back to 50 for the sake of illustration. So we can offset the reference lines as well. So there's quite a bit of flexibility there. Next, we have the different sorts of geometry methods that we can draw the wall with. So we've got straight, trapezoid and polygonal. So we're gonna go through each one of those. So I'm just gonna go for a straight wall first. And basically what we've done already, is just a straight piece of wall by left mouse clicking and moving the mouse, it's creating the wall. The trapezoid wall, as soon as you click on the trapezoid wall, you'll notice that these two fields highlight. So now they are editable, whereas I was on the straight wall, that was actually dimmed out, we couldn't access that. As soon as you click there, they become available again, and we can change the wall on both sides. So I'm gonna make that 50, and on the other side, I'm gonna make that 500. So push OK. Now that allows us to draw a wall that is 50 down one side and 500 down the other side, irrespective of how long that wall is. Those two dimensions stay constant. And the final option is the polygon wall. If I click on that, these options change once again. These are both grayed out and we also have poly wall corners can change button there. If I push OK, I'm just going to move this up a little and I'm going to draw a, just a wall of any shape, in the shape of a polygon obviously. So there's our wall and has all the attributes of a wall. However, if I change a wall that's connected to this wall, I'm just going to move away from the polygon wall and put a straight wall there. I just want to see the reference line here. If I draw a wall on an angle, I can turn that off. If I select this polygon wall once again and I open the palette, if I check poly wall corners can change, I push OK, it makes that intersection react differently. And that's the basic difference, well that's the basic fun function of that button. So now if I go back to the palette, we can see We've covered all those buttons. So I'm just going to go back to the straight wall and we're going to modify straight walls using these four buttons here. These four alternatives are basically increasing the complexity of the wall. Straight, slanted, double slanted and a complex profile. We'll go over each of these individually. First of all, straight walls, we've done. That's the standard wall. The first icon means that we can tilt a wall. At the moment this wall is 50 mil thick, which is, let's make it 100 mil, so it's a nice round number, and it's tilting 50 degrees. Now if I wanted to change that to say 80 degrees, I can push OK, and if I draw a wall, we can see that it's represented differently but if I go to the 3D window and I can see all those different wall types we can see that angled wall there and if I click on the arrow tool and I can actually click on one of those black nodes and a pet palette comes up and I can just click on that third icon and I can tilt the angle in real time in the 3D window to any angle that I like if I wanted to marry that up to this wall here, I can take my cursor up to there without clicking, make sure there's a tick there. Now I can line that wall up with that particular wall over there. I'll just do that again. I'll line it up to this wall, the ticks there. So it's, so it's pretty easy to create very accurate tilting walls. I'm just gonna get out of there. Next, I'm just gonna select all the walls I selected the slab as well because I was on the arrow tool, so I'm just going to deselect that by clicking into the white space. I'm going to click on the wall tool, click on Control All or Apple All, and delete all the walls. Now I'm going to open the wall palette again. Next icon is the double slanted wall. So 
over here we've got a wall that's 100 mil thick at the bottom I'm going to change that to say 300 thick and we'll make the angle a bit milder say 75 degrees on one side and make the other one 80 degrees on the other side you can see the angle on the left hand side there and 75 is the angle on that side as the little icon shows there if I push OK and start drawing a wall I might undo that and redo that straight so now if I go to the 3D window we can see we've actually created this wall now if I actually want to change that I can grab that and even in the 3D window if I hold the mouse button down this pet palette comes up and I can change where this wall is sitting how it's sitting I can line it up with the top if I like I can change by selecting this icon I can change the angle and I can also change the top as well so I can model very freely in this window and changing the heights angles widths it's actually very flexible wall tool now and it can either incline inwards or outwards or a combination so now I'm going to go back to the wall tool icon and finally we have the complex profile type wall at the moment I might just change the thickness of the wall to 500 millimeters and to access these profiles if I left mouse click and expand the floor plan and section palette and under structure and under profile if I click on with our left mouse button there a bunch of profiles will come up these may have been saved from an early session but at the moment there's just the standard ones that are in ArchiCAD at the moment and we will create another movie just dedicated to this part of creating because it's a new feature so I'm just going to choose the crown corners at this stage push OK and as I start drawing I'll just change this to continuous we can see if I go to the 3D window you can see that wall it's quite a complex profile I might just grab both those and move it up a little bit so we can see all of it just cancel out of there move it up a bit higher we'll explain all the 3D icons and how to navigate in the 3D windows on another section of this DVD so there's my profile and that's where we access that from so if I close that and go back to that wall palette that really finishes off that geometry positioning section of the palette I'm just going to go back to the straight wall and we're just going to expand the floor plan display and keep moving on down through there